Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Getting going on this house staircase and I needed a whole bunch of custom sized shims. So I made a jig here. I'm gonna show you what I did, how you can make this. It's a very fast jig to make. It's relatively safe to use um, and it's gonna give us a custom sized shim, which is what I need for this job. Before we get started, I'll show you what I need this big bucket of shims for. This is a template for a shop built housed staircase. As you can see here, I've got my template. And what we're gonna do is cope the treads in and insert the risers like so. But then I need these custom sized shims. Uh, they're actually wedges that'll get driven in and then I'll flip this around and show you exactly what that looks like. You can see here from the back side, these shims get driven in like so. Uh, this would be the stringer and that's what they're gonna be used for. So in this case, I wanted about an eight inch shim going from a half inch down here to about a 16th or an eighth on the front end. I didn't wanna bring it all the way to zero because I wanna be able to pound these in. So I want a little bit of space up here uh, to really drive those hard. To get started, you're just gonna want a piece of scrap plywood. This happened to be about 12 inches wide by 16 inches deep here. And before we do anything else, go ahead and rip yourself your track guide that will mount on the bottom. Don't go the full length with this because the longer you make it, the more friction you're gonna have. Go about nine or 10 inches long. And then what we wanna do is rip it to a little bit less than the actual depth of your guide channel here. And the reason for that is you don't want it riding on the bottom, uh, getting caught up in sawdust or creating more friction rubbing on the saw. We really only want it hitting on the sides. So for me, I'm uh, ripping this at about three eighths wide. I'll do that now. Now the guide channel on this table saw is such that a piece of three quarter will fit, but it's nice and snug, maybe even a little bit too snug. You can see here, it'll go in there, but this is gonna wear itself down a little bit. So I'm just gonna leave it at, at this thickness and go with that. You can see here, this is the jig that I already made and used to make that bucket of shims. And it was a little bit tighter at first, but it'll kind of wear out and get where it needs to be. So I'm gonna take my scrap piece of plywood, bring this over here and um, I'm gonna set it. I'm gonna, note right where I've got it, but then I'm actually not gonna move the fence again and I'll show you why in a second. Now we've essentially created the zero clearance aspect of this where the front edge of our plywood is gonna be the start of our shim. So we know we want a half inch on the backside here for the shim. That means we need to run this through the table saw at an angle. To get the angle of the shim that we need, just take a half inch, which is right here, and add it onto this side of the board temporarily and run it through the table saw, and that will give you this cut. So here, I've got a half inch piece of scrap. I'm just gonna take a couple little blobs of 2P10, and this is just gonna temporarily tack this piece on, and it'll be really easy to knock off in a second. Our piece of half inch is tacked onto the side. Go ahead and raise your saw blade up as high as it'll go. That way you get a nice plumb cut. Whenever you get back to this point, we'll cut all the way to our line right here. Probably the easiest way to make this cut right here is just to flip it around and do a quick little freehand cut right there. Again, I don't wanna move this fence at this point. You 
use just a little bit too much 2P10. Boy, I hate it when I get going and forget to hit the record button, but uh, now I've got my piece of guide here glued on. Uh, what I did was just drop the piece down into the channel here. And since I had it ripped at a little bit less depth than the channel itself, I put these pieces of cardboard down here to raise it up so that it was just a little bit higher than the table, put some CA glue on top of it, and then dropped the plywood right down on top and uh, let that set for about 30 seconds before I pulled it out. So now we've got a guide and again, this will kind of wear a little bit and get smoother as you run it through a few times. At this point, I can go ahead now and I'm gonna move my fence over. Don't need that to be stationary anymore. And you can see that how that motion will work. You can just put your piece in here. But before we do that, for safety's sake, we need a handle. You don't need anything fancy at all, just something that will uh, help you control the jig a little bit. The other thing I recommend doing with your handle is keep it all the way over to the side. Don't make it continuous across here. And the reason for that is you will know that if your right hand is always on this, as I push this through, that it's always well away from the blade. So I know if my hand is on this, there is no way that I'm going to cut one of these fingers on my right hand. When it comes to this handle, you really don't need anything fancy. And I think actually all you really need is a piece of one by on the back side here. And what I decided to do was run the back, even with the back end of the shot slot where my shim is going to get cut. That way, as I run these through, I can have my left hand and right hand in alignment. And it just kind of helps me know where my body is at as I run these through the saw. So to put this handle on, just run a couple lines squared across here. And what I did was just use some 2P10, dabbed it on, set it on, and then put a couple drywall th screws through the bottom up into here. That way I know in case the 2P10 breaks, I'm not gonna have any problems because the screws are gonna hold it. You might not think of shims as exactly rocket science as far as tasks, but this would be a very high probability task of cutting a finger off or hurting yourself on the table saw. Anytime you're doing a, a repetitious task, your chance of hurting yourself goes up at least 10 times, if not 100 times, because of that repetitious nature of things. Your brain just kind of shuts off. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing something like this. Obviously, we've got our right hand over here. My left hand is still in play manipulating the workpiece. The bit the wider the workpiece that I can use, the more it's going to keep my hand away from here. This 1x4 isn't a great example. The other thing you really have to watch out for whenever you're making wedges is that the thin end can actually fall down in to the insert in and around the blade and cause a lot of issues. A lot of times I make some four inch shims for installing mitered crown molding. I like to use it to work the miters. And because of the short length, uh, it's really a pain to make those because they can fall between the blade and the insert. So I'll show you a trick to deal with that. Go ahead and lower your blade all the way down so that it's underneath the tabletop surface. And then you can just take some tape, uh, any kind of tape will do, but painter's tape probably will work the best for you. And put it right over your saw blade and run it the whole length. This will ensure that your jig doesn't actually end up catching on this. About three or four pieces. It's thin enough that if you don't use more than a couple, if you, you need more than one piece, basically, uh, going with about three or four pieces really stiffens it up. Now we can create a zero clearance just by raising the blade up.
This will help ensure that as we run these shims through, the pointed edge isn't gonna fall down into this slot on the back side here, and it's, nothing is gonna fall down beside the blade in any way. Whenever you are making shims, you always wanna make sure, obviously, that the fat end is on the back side as you push these through. And as they go through, hopefully the front edge is gonna catch something up here where it can't fall down in. However, if we did this in the opposite way, you can see as I would push this through, that point could potentially fall down and wedge between your insert and the blade, and that's a bad deal. We don't want that. All right, it's time to make some shims. Just grab a piece of scrap and mark on your miter saw the length that you want. In this case, I know I want eight inches, so I put a pencil mark there. and you can batch cut a bunch of pieces to length really quickly doing it that way. Now the best thing to do would, have a, would be to have a bucket on the back side here where these shims could just fall into, but since my outfeed table's in the way, I don't have that, so I'll just kind of have to push to the side. You really gotta watch your left hand whenever you're doing this. You could very easily cut yourself. I love having a saw stop table saw um, it's just an extra layer of insurance. I've never set this off. I don't use it as an excuse to be unsafe, uh, but it is a great insurance policy. Once you get to the end, just discard that small piece. Don't get your fingers too close to the blade when you're doing this. It's just not worth losing a finger for a couple of extra pieces of shim. For this project, I wanted to have a blunt end on the end of my shims. In general, most guys prefer to have a very thin tapered point on their shims. It's really easy using this jig. All you have to do is make your shim, your block of wood longer, and that will allow you to get down to that extremely fine tapered point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, that jig is a great way to make a bunch of custom sh size shims, any length, thickness, whatever you want really easily. It takes no time at all to make that jig. Be sure to stay tuned to the channel where soon we'll be building this house staircase and actually be using these shims in this stair making application. I'm really excited to get going on it and uh, start putting some things together. So thanks for joining me again. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.